Welcome, friends, to the broadcast. I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 9, and we're going to be talking about what the blood of Jesus Christ has secured for us. Jesus already paid the price for our forgiveness, past, present, and future, and he already paid the price for us to walk in the promises of God. Stay tuned, and you'll be blessed. Friends, we're so glad that you tuned into the broadcast, and God is so good. I have Aaron here with us, and we're teaching again this week on the book of Hebrews. And we began last week. This is one of my favorite books, but Hebrews is really talking about we have a better covenant established on better promises. That's Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. That's the key verse. The key word is better. And what makes it better is Jesus. And so uh, we went through Hebrews chapter 1 through chapter 8 last week. And we talked about Christ is better than angels. Christ is better than Moses. And um, really we talked about um, we have a better high priest, all these different things. Jesus is the great high priest of the new covenant. And we have a kingdom of priests today. Uh, but we talked about that. We said we had a better covenant. Now we're talking about in Hebrews chapter 9, we have a better covenant, uh, a better sanctuary and better sacrifice. That's awesome. Yeah, Jesus really does make everything better. In this new covenant that we have, all the all the promises are based upon what Jesus has already done. And the new covenant that we are in as believers, it's an eternal covenant. It's one that doesn't go away. So That's for awesome. all eternity, we get to access God's presence through the sacrifice of Jesus. His Amen. his sacrifice was the eternal sacrifice and the salvation Amen. that he gives us, it's, it's an eternal salvation. Yeah, you talked about that. I loved it when you were teaching, you shared about it. he's the author of eternal salvation mm -hmm. to all those who believe and uh, this being an eternal sacrifice. That's mm -hmm. what Hebrews 9 is talking about. There's one sacrifice for all sin of all time. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more that needs to be done for us to receive the promise, there's nothing more that needs to be done on the part of the, the Lord Jesus Christ, on the part of the Father God. There's nothing more that needs to be done, but we just need to believe mm -hmm. in what's already been done and allow the Holy Spirit to, to work in our life. Mm -hmm. And so let's jump into Hebrews chapter 9, verse uh, 1. It says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and worldly sanctuary, there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick, the table, the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. So this is talking about the uh, outer tabernacle. And, uh, and it says, after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, or the most holy place mm -hmm. in the tabernacle. When you look at those, really, the most holy place represents the spirit and, uh, or the spirit of man, the, the holy place represents the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. And these three uh, things, the candlestick, the showbread, and the altar, they represent the mind, the will, and the emotions. And then uh, the outer court represented the body of man. And they had, the, le the first of all, the uh, place for the uh, sacrifice, where they had blood sacrifice for our sin. And then they had the um, laver, and so those things we're talking about the body. So it's really a picture of spirit, soul, and body. But we go through this. He said this most holy place had the golden censer, the Ark of the Covenant, overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant over at the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, which we can now, not now speak particularly. Now when these things were ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle. So the priests went always into this holy place, and they, it says they accomplished uh, the, the service of God, but into the second, the most holy place, went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors or the sins of the people. The Holy Ghost was signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not made manifest 
while the first tabernacle was standing. So I believe what happened when the high priest went into this most holy place once a year and took that blood for his own sin and the people's sin, that was like an IOU. But when Jesus came, you know, into that most holy place in the heavenly tabernacle, he paid the debt off. Mm. Praise God. And he paid the debt for all of the past sin and also paid the debt for all of the future sin mm -hmm. of humanity. There's only one sacrifice for all sin of all time, and that is the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. that has completely paid the price. Only one sacrifice that completely paid it. You just think about um, how special this must have been, how rare it was you know, for the high priest to go into the Holy of Holies. He would only do it one day out of the year on the Day of Atonement on uh, Yom Kippur. And so not that many people probably got to go into the Holy of Holies and see the Ark of the Covenant. You know, it, was, it was very limited access in, into God's presence. But now because of what Jesus has done, the, it says in Hebrews that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Yes. So Jesus actually gives everyone access through him. If you right. want to have access to the Holy of Holies, it's only through Jesus. Right. Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil of the temple between the holy place and the most holy place was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And it was signifying that, you know, now we could go into the presence of God, 325 or 365, 24, 7, mm -hmm. every, every day, all the time. Mm -hmm. And it signified also that God came to live in the hearts of men. Mm -hmm. So he says in verse 9, Hebrews 9, verse 9, this was a figure for the time then present in which uh, were offered both gifts and sacrifices that cannot make him uh, who did the service perfect. Mm. This cannot even perfect or complete the high priest mm -hmm. pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances uh, imposed on them until the time of the Reformation. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about everything changed when Jesus died and rose again. Mm -hmm. That's the time, this is biblically the time of the Reformation. Mm -hmm. But he says, Christ being come a high priest of the good things to come. Look at this in verse 11, the good things to come. What is the good things to come? The good things of the gospel, the righteousness of God, which is by faith, sanctification, the blessings of God, the promises of God, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, talking about his own body, not made with hands, that is to say, of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Mm. Again, you talked about Christ as the author of eternal salvation, mm. and now it says he obtained eternal redemption for us. So he has already purchased us. The price has already paid. When you come to God to ask forgiveness for your sin or to ask uh, for a promise, he doesn't have to, you know, question about that. It's already, the price has already been paid. He's just waiting for you to come. It's kind of like the prodigal son uh, with the loving father in Luke chapter 15. That father was looking down the road. He was waiting for his son to come home. Mm -hmm. And when his son came, he ran down the road to greet him. He mm -hmm. said, bring the best robe, put my ring on his hand, put my shoes on his feet for my son who's lost has returned. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was just waiting. That's how God is with us. He's just waiting. You know what? He didn't, he didn't even wait for that son to get a confession of, of repentance out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, that son repented in the hog pen. Mm -hmm. That son came to himself. Sometimes the hog pen will do that. I don't think the hog pen is the will of God for the believer, but some people go to the hog pen mm -hmm. because they're stubborn. And anyway... Um, you know, he repented and he came to himself. He said, I'm going to go to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned in your sight. Mm -hmm. You know, just let me be as a servant. But he, could, he didn't even get that confession out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. The father just said, bring the best robe, bring my ring, put it on his hand, put my shoes on his feet. Mm -hmm. Let's kill the fatted calf, my son that's lost is found. Mm -hmm. And that's like God is with us. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to wonder if he's going to forgive your son. He's just waiting for you to come back. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So, he says, uh, Jesus did this one time, uh, shed his blood, and I believe he took his blood into the most holy place in heaven. 
Uh -huh. in the tabernacle in heaven, put it on the altar before the Father, and has obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood, look at this in verse 13, if the blood of bulls and goats, these Old Testament sacrifices, and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh. Old Testament sacrifices dealt with the sins of the flesh, but the New Testament sacrifice deals with our spirit. Uh -huh. Look at this in verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Uh -huh. You know, it's not the dead works of keeping the law. It's not the dead works of our performance. It's not how much we read our Bible or how much we pray or how much we give. It's not any of those things that make us acceptable to God. It is the blood of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that makes us acceptable to God. And so he says, he purges our conscience from dead works. This is talking mm -hmm. about physical performance. This is mm -hmm. talking about relying on yourself, relying on something else other than Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I love it. You know, the these Old Testament sacrifices couldn't change someone's heart, couldn't purify someone's no. inner man. Right. You know, there, there we have an inner man, someone on the inside of us. Even Paul writes about this and said, you know, I concerning the law, I kept it perfectly. Yeah. But but it didn't it didn't make him righteous. He said, My my performance, me keeping the law, me, you know, it it doesn't My righteousness anything. was as filthy rags, he said. Right. And, um, you know, people today just get obsessed about random things that don't really matter. I remember a couple of years ago, um, I saw in the news, and a lot of prophets were talking about this, but there were like five red heifers being shipped, pure bread, red heifers being flown from Texas to Israel. And, uh, you know, prophets were saying how this is such a big deal because... You know, for for revelation to happen, we have to have these red heifers, and and people are really just making a big deal about these red heifers. But they need to read Hebrews. Like there, there's something much greater that has happened than like red heifers being flown into Israel or into Jerusalem. And, and Aaron, that could be something prophetically about that. The Bible talks about some of these sacrifices, but Jesus' sacrifice is what perfected us mm -hmm. in the spirit. And this is what we should be excited about as believers is what Jesus has already accomplished at the cross. Amen. And that he is coming again. Yeah, we, we can rejoice. And actually, it talks about this in Hebrews uh, chapter 9, verse 28. It says, so Christ was once offered to bear the sin. He took the sin of the whole world on himself. Oh. Of many, and unto them that look for him, he will appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Mm -hmm. So thank God for that work that's already been done. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the sacrifice that's already been made. The price has already been paid. And we don't have to wait for some other thing. We can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. receive our righteousness, mm -hmm. receive forgiveness of sin, receive the promises of the covenant. Mm -hmm. Again, we have a better covenant established on better promises. And what made it better is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he is the better, his blood is the better sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Amen. And because the blood has already paid the price for our forgiveness and for our redemption, mm -hmm. for our salvation, our sanctification, and our inheritance. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So we're going to take a very short break, and then we're going to come back right after this break, and we're going to continue to share here in Hebrews chapter 9 about what the blood of Jesus has secured for us. So, you know, stay tuned. Praise God. You don't want to miss the rest of this broadcast. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Hi friends, I'm so glad that you're watching today. I have my son Aaron with me and we're teaching on the book of Hebrews. This is one of my favorite books of the Bible and we have some great teaching available on our website, charischristiancenter.com. It's free of charge, downloadable, Hebrews the Better Covenant, Hebrews, Jesus makes everything better and my book also, Hebrews the Better Covenant. when Paul prays, I like how he prays because there's never a sense of need. There's never a sense of lack. There's never a sense of, of defeat. There's never, a, there's only a sense of this is who God is. This is who Christ is. So if you want to know how to pray in a New Testament way, take Paul's prayers and pray them.
Praise the Lord, friends. I'm glad you stayed with us. We are right here in Hebrews chapter 9. We just talked about how the blood of Old Testament sacrifices in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12 through verse 14 dealt with the flesh. They dealt with the outward man. But the blood of Jesus Christ deals with our spirit. It deals with the inward man. And Peter talks about how it's the inward man. It's the hidden man of the heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes on and says in verse 15, we moved over this and said to this, for this cause, he, speaking of Jesus, is the mediator of the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Moses was the one who mediated the old covenant, but Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, those who are called might receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. So we talked about we have eternal salvation. We have an eternal sacrifice. And here it says we have an eternal inheritance. Mm -hmm. I love an inheritance. You know what? When If you get an inheritance, you didn't do anything to, to deserve that or earn it. You get an inheritance because of what somebody else worked and somebody else saved, and somebody else invested, mm -hmm. somebody else toiled, and you know what? You just show up and receive it. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to do with salvation and the promises of God. Mm -hmm. We just show up and receive them. Mm -hmm. Now, because we're saved, we live different. Mm -hmm. Because we have the Spirit of God in us, it changes how we live. But it's not, we don't receive these things because of what we did, it's because mm -hmm. of what Jesus did. Amen. So he says, where a testament is, in verse 16, there is a, also the necessity of the death of a tester. If you're going to have a last will and testament come into effect, somebody has to die. Mm -hmm. to, and until they die, that thing can be changed. Mm -hmm. But once they die, that thing is however it was when they died. He says, for a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it has no power at all while the tester lives. So when we think about this, Jesus died to enact the new covenant, uh -huh. the last will and testament of God. Uh -huh. Amen. And he rose again to carry it out, uh -huh. to see that it's done right. And so he says, whereupon neither, neither the first covenant was dedicated without blood. In verse 19, he says, for when Moses spoke every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats and water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled the book and all the people. He sprinkled the covenant, and then he sprinkled the people. Mm -hmm. And get this, listen to what he said, saying, this is the blood of the covenant of the testament which God has enjoined to you. The covenant is not about me trying to get something from God. The covenant is not about you trying to get something from God. The covenant is about God trying to get something to us. Mm -hmm. And he, so the, the blood of Jesus, first of all, secured the promise. The promises of God today are yes and amen to the glory of God by us because of what Jesus did. The promise is secure. It's not about our performance. It's not about how well we kept the law. It's about Jesus and his blood has secured that promise. Mm -hmm. I love that it's talking. I love just all throughout Hebrews, um, the writer here, you know, just relates the Old Testament to the New Testament and just said even the Old Testament was dedicated with blood just like the New um, Testament, the New Covenant has been dedicated with blood. Man, just what a powerful uh, dedication service that we had for the New Covenant. Amen. Praise God. So number one, Jesus secured the promise with his blood. And then it says this, and he's talking about Moses in the Old Testament, but we, we take this to the New Testament and realize what has already happened. Then it says in verse 21, Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, God hasn't really had anybody qualified working for him yet. Mm -hmm. But what qualifies us is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I like to say I'm qualified for God's best blessing. Mm -hmm. Amen? And we're qualified because of the blood of Jesus. We're qualified for ministry because of the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. and because of the Spirit of God. It's what God has done for us. And it's not us, it's Him. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, uh, the blood of Jesus secured the promise. Secondly, it co we were covered by the sacrifice. Man, that sacrifice covered it. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago, I had a, a friend of mine and he helped me 
it was when I was in the cattle business and when we were pastoring Kit Carson, this friend of mine helped me grind, you know, all, hey, all winter, if I had a, a small feedlot there uh, for, my, for my cattle. And, and because uh, he, my friend's grinder was out in the country, he had another friend that had a grinder that was close. And his friend came after the fact and demanded that I pay him for this and demanded basically a price that I could have paid somebody else to bring their tractors and do all the work, all the labor. We did all the labor. We used my friend's tractor, but we used his friend's grinder and he demanded this big price. And I called my friend and told him about it. He said, come see me. And he just, he just wrote me a check for that amount of money and said, listen, just put that in the bank and then go write this guy a check. I covered it. Mm. And because it's been covered, you know what? You don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. And basically, because Jesus covered our sins, amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's been covered. We don't have to worry about it. It's mm -hmm. already been paid. It's already been taken care of. Not only that, all the promises have been covered. Mm -hmm. They've been taken care of. They've been paid for. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do anything to earn them, to deserve them. Praise God, we get them just like we get salvation. Mm -hmm. Praise God, forgiveness of sin, righteousness. We get all the promises, peace and provision, health, healing. All these promises are because Jesus already paid the price mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are living today as a result of the finished work of the cross. Mm -hmm. And he goes on and he says, almost all things. This is Hebrews 9, verse 22. By the law are purged with the blood, but without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Mm -hmm. Praise God, the blood has remitted our sin. It's, mm -hmm. it's not only forgiven our sin, it's, it's canceled the debt. Mm -hmm. It's like there's no more remembrance of that sin. You can't even find it anywhere, praise mm -hmm. God. And, and it, it's amazing when we understand what the remission of sin is really talking about, mm -hmm. praise God. So remission means forgiveness, deliverance, liberty, to pardon as if never committed. Mm -hmm. So God doesn't even remember our sin it's completely been paid for. It's completely been done. He says, it was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens would be purified with these, but in the, the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So in the Old Testament, it was a pattern, but now it is the blood of Jesus that's in heaven. You know, there's a there's a pretty popular move, movement within Christianity where they kind of just uh, really try to downplay what sin is down well like the, people even say there's no hell there's no really really penalty for sin and um actually someone's talking to me recently and just said hell isn't a real place and and just jesus well, just talked really about gehenna Bible. and i said gehenna that valley i've been there and no jew will walk into that that valley because they believe that's where um the canaanites sacrificed children to molech he yes. said if he's, if he's talking about Gehenna, that's a, that's a horrifying place, and Jews today will not even go there. It's a it's a Muslim park, and Jews will not even step foot in Gehenna because it is a horrific, a hellish place. Hell. It's a type of hell. And um, I know that sin is a big deal because I know what the price that had to be paid to, to, to forgive sins. It, it had to be the price of Jesus Christ himself. God's only begotten son. And without, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So praise God in what Jesus did. And so when we go on and read this, so the, the blood of Jesus secured the promise. It covered, you know, our sin. It was mm -hmm. covered by the sacrifice. And then, you know, it sanctified the people. The blood sanctified the believer. He says, it was therefore necessary, and I'm in Hebrews 9, 23, that the pattern of things in heavens would be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices, the blood of Christ. For Christ did not enter into the holy place made with hands, which are a figure of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Jesus is appearing in the presence of God for us. Not nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest. He doesn't have to make another sacrifice mm -hmm. into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then he must often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world, those sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament were a type of what Jesus was going to do. Has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself? This blood is eternal in its application, one time, one sacrifice for all sin, past, present, and future. He said, and it is appointed 
in, in verse 27, unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Listen, you're not going to come back as another form of being. That is a lie. It's appointed a man once to die and then the judgment. He says in verse 28, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him. Are you looking for Jesus? We need to be looking for Jesus. Shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation? Mm. Thank God Jesus is coming again. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have been saved in our spirit. Our soul is being saved, and we trust that our body will be saved when Jesus comes again. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So thank God for what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Amen. Amen. What a sacrifice. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, free material available on our website. We actually, not too long ago, just made it. So everything on our website is available for, for free or for a donation, and that's thanks to our partners. If you really value the Word of God, the Word of God is so powerful. God said, I've actually esteemed my word greater than my name. Amen. The word is powerful. And this, uh, this ministry preaches the full word, the full gospel. And if you really value that, want to sow into it, you can become a partner today. You can give us a call now or go to our website to start giving. But we want to say a big thank you to all of our partners. Yeah. And if you need prayer today, I have trained prayer ministers. That, you know, we, we have a lot mm -hmm. of people uh, that give us testimonies. I just got a testimony uh, yesterday from a woman in Florida that I mm. prayed for last year, and she had cancer. She's been completely healed, mm. and she was on our website downloading free material. And uh, we've got testimonies of people. They call in. They get saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, healed. And so if you need prayer today, just give us a call. Thank you so much, and bless us. In the Hebrews package, which includes Hebrews, the better covenant, and Hebrews, Jesus changes everything, you'll learn how the new covenant is better than the old simply because of Jesus. We'd like to bless you with a digital copy of each teaching, a $70 value, free of charge. You can also order the book Hebrews, the better covenant for $9.99. Download your free teachings and purchase the book today at charischristiancenter.com. Hey everyone, my good friend Jesse Duplantis is going to be here Sunday, November 5th at 6.30 p.m. at Karis Christian Center in Colorado Springs. You don't want to miss it. You let God do what He wants, and He'll bless you beyond your wildest dreams, spiritually, physically, and financially. Come be encouraged with the Word of God in Brother Jesse Duplantis, Sunday, November 5th at Karis Christian Center. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.